Drive Ignition. This is Actar's Reviews. From anime to figures and beyond. Hey, this is Ektar and you are watching another episode of Ektar's Figure Reviews and today we will be taking a look at an upcoming action figure line, the Mobip series that promises to be a huge, huge competition for the Figma line and the Revotech line. But are the figures actually that good? Well, let's take a look here. And here is one of the first two figures that are actually released in the line, and that is of Rin Natsume from the series Little Busters. And the other figure is from Little Busters as well. Now, I don't really know much of this series, except that it is an exceedingly popular visual novel game. I can't wait for it to be turned into an anime, because since the visual novel game is in Japanese, and, well, I can't understand Japanese, so that pretty much rules the entire game out for me. Uh, the only thing I know of the series is from the four coma and what I've read on Wikipedia. So I can't really give you much background story on it except that Rin is the only female member of the group Little Busters in the school at the beginning of the game and she loves cats and but she's not very sociable and possibly tsundere like I'm not sure. And so let's get down to the crux of this review and that is of course the figure itself. So first let's take a look at the box. We said we see that it's a nice lavender purplish color scheme. You have little dots that slowly fade out to white. The mobile logo here. The logo of the series, Little Busters and Rin Natsume's name. Uh, we see the figure itself in this window display. Turning the box to the side, we see Little Busters and we see the figure uh, name here, Mobib. High quality figure series. Hmm. That sounds a little bit pretentious, don't you think? But well, we'll see if it lives up to its name. And at the back, like all the other figure series, we see a nice collage of pictures detailing the figure and its accessories. Caution, this product may contain sharp points or edges. Exercise care required for unpacking and assembling. Yeah, all right. And at the side, we see Rin in a nice running pose. Other than that, there's pretty much nothing else I can say about the box, so let's open it up and take a look at the figure inside. And here we have the figure in its plastic packaging, and aside from the figure and its accessories itself, they're laid out really, really nicely, but other than that, the it looks pretty sparse, so well, let's open it up and take a look at the figure itself in closer detail. And so here we have a Mobib written in all of her figure glory, and initial impressions, well, the figure itself is really nice, this construction on the figure is nice, the joints themselves, they are tight, but not as tight as the figmas. Mm, the the sculpted detail is there. It's pretty it's pretty nicely detailed. The paint apps are painted on nicely. There doesn't seem to be any paint flaws or a running of paint whatsoever. And overall, from what I've seen from the game and the four coma, she looks pretty accurate to her original well 2D counterpart. And there's something else I really forgot to mention is that her skirt, and I really do love this checkered design. Mm. Uh, the skirt is made of a soft PVC, and so is her shirt. So. No problems here, no problems for my initial impression, although the facial expression is a little bit too bland and spaced out for my liking. But we'll take a look at the figure and its articulation in closer detail in a second. But first, let's take a look at the accessories in which it comes with. So first off, it's what I suppose are going to be the Mobib basics. First, we have a Mobib tree jointed stand and we have a Mobib base. And, well, it's pretty similar, I should say, to the Figma one. In a sense that the Figma one, I actually have it over here. The Figma base, we see that it's in a hexagonal shape, while the Mobib is rounded, and the Figma uh, name is actually molded into the base, while the Mobib one is actually printed. And the three jointed stand, well, they're pretty similar. Although, if we compare the length, I would say that the Mobib's one is much, much longer than the Figma's one. And the... The circles the and the joints are actually a little bit bigger than the one on the figmas. So, well, but they're pretty similar in design, I should say. So now we move on to the figure-specific accessories. First off, she comes with an, a little cat. It's really nice. Uh, well, it is a cat, and it's pretty nicely detailed. She comes with an, a pair of exchangeable hands. These pair of exchangeable hands feature her hands clenched. And next, she comes with a hand that's grasping a little uh, baseball. And to follow that up, she comes with a hand wearing a baseball glove. 
She also comes with an exchangeable face that features her in an angry, with an angry expression. And she also comes with a pair of Neko Mimi. And for those who are unfamiliar with the term, that is cat ear in Japanese. So bringing the figure back, let's take a look at the articulation of this figure. Uh, for her head, up, down, left and right, no problems there whatsoever. For her hair, her ponytail, it can move forwards and backwards. Turn side to side, it's also on a ball joint. So there's a full range of motion there. For her arm, in and out, forwards and backwards. And it can actually swivel side to side. And if you actually notice, the arm is on a double ball joint. Once at the body itself and once at the arm. So this allows for a ton of natural movement. For her elbow, forwards and backwards. And for her hand, it can turn side to side and move forwards and backwards. But due to the design of the sleeve, it's actually slightly, the articulation of the hand is slightly hindered. Uh, for her body, nothing there. There is a ball jointed waist, and as for her legs, she can turn she can turn side to side, move forwards and backwards, in and out. Her knees move forwards and backwards, and for her feet, you can move forwards and backwards, turn side to side, and swivel side to side this way as well. So a pretty impressive amount of articulation, and slightly more if I dare say, average Figma because of the double ball jointed arms, and that is something that I'm really impressed with. The joints themselves are pretty tight, as I've said previously, and even though they are a bit looser than the Figma figures, they do hold a pose pretty well, and they don't buckle uh, under her own weight. You can also see a hole at the back of her body for the stand to plug in. So while playing the figure, I actually noticed that her hair contains sparkles. And this, I have to say, really adds to the liveliness of the, of the hair. And, well, I do like shiny things, so nice detail there. So now it's time for a comparison between the Mobip figures and the Figma figures. So first of all, as you can see, in terms of size, the Figma figures are slightly taller than the Mobip figures, um, even though the articulation is pretty much the same. The quality of the figures are also pretty good as well. Uh, the design of the joints, while... I have to say that they are pretty similar. There are slight differences in terms of the joints and joint design and articulation, just enough to make these figures different from the Figma figures and not just a direct copy. Uh, details, they are pretty much, um, in terms of details and accuracy, where well, I can say that both of them are pretty good. Uh, both of them are pretty great and the level of detail and accuracy is pretty much similar. The sculpting on both figures are great and both of them look as good as their original animated counterparts. And while the accessory, well, in terms of accessories, both of them do come with a very, very nice three-jointed stand and base. The Figma figures do tend to come with more accessories, and they also come with a plastic Ziploc bag that is exceedingly convenient to store all the accessories, and that is something that the Mobip figures don't come with. So overall, even though these figures aren't really as tall as the Figma figures, nor do they come with that many accessories, I can highly recommend these figures for any figure fan or any fan of the series Little Busters. I can say that as a figure collector, I'm pretty impressed by the level of detail, the accuracy of the figure to the original animated counterpart, and of course its sculpt and articulation is pretty phenomenal as well. I'm really looking forward to future releases of this Mobip line, and I'm happy to say that the girls from the series k will be making an appearance in this line as well. People are definitely going to compare this line of figures to the Figma line and say that Mobip are copying the Figma figures and just wants a share of the pie as well. But I don't mind, as long as we produce good quality figures and of characters that aren't already being produced in the Figma line, I have absolutely no qualms of that whatsoever. And overall, once again, I highly recommend these figures and definitely pick up if you get the chance. So the exact are saying, see you guys in the next episode. Neko Mimimoto!